Some eat to live, others live to eat. Some are willing to die for the perfect dining experience. Let's look at a few delicious hidden morsels that you might have left on the plate in the menu. As you watch the movie, observant audience members might just get a sense of dread and deja vu, as if this film was a macabre take on Willy Wonka. That's because all of the characters have clear and pronounced character flaws that make them all pretty unlikable. Bit of an understatement in the case of a couple of them, but whatever. The thing is though, if you think about it, the diners are actually meant to represent the biblical deadly sins. The greed table is represented by the embezzlement bros, Soren, Dave, and Bryce. The gluttony table is represented by Tyler, the insufferable food fan that must take a picture of every meal. Please. Yeah, he's that guy. The lust table is represented by Richard, the wealthy cheater, and his wife, who are regulars, but apparently Richard has brought a different guest or two to the chef before. The Envy table has George, the washed up actor desperate to feel important yet again. Lillian and Ted sit at the table that represents pride. They're so vain that they think the whole meal is all about them. Chef Julian Slowick's mother sits at the sloth table due to her doing nothing to stop her husband's abuse of their family. And the staff that will eventually kill everyone fittingly represents wrath. Additionally, there are 12 dining guests which might seem a bit familiar to a few of you as there were 12 guests at the Last Supper, which for the guests of this particular dinner service, it certainly was. An early Easter egg can be found in one of the opening scenes of the movie. As the customers disembark from the boat, they are greeted by the host, Elsa, then led to the restaurant by her and a few goats. These are a nod to the Judas goat, which is a type of goat used to herd and calm cattle and or other livestock into the slaughterhouse. If you can't pick up on the symbolism there, I don't really know what to tell you. I don't think it could be more blatant if they tried. The Hawthorne Institute is built in a way that seems off-putting to say the least. Although placed on a beautiful island, the restaurant and the staff quarters are very basic. The entire kitchen staff lives in a small barracks with nothing but seemingly the absolute bare essentials. Just beds, lockers, and bathrooms. You could assume that this is to keep the staff focused on nothing but the task of cooking. When you think about it, this kind of sounds like the behavior of a cult. They follow everything the chef says without fail responding in unison to his signals, and being completely obedient to his every wish. I'm not saying it's a cult, but it's very cult-ish. Like if the chef told them to drink some special Kool-Aid, I would not be surprised if they did it without hesitation. Yes, chef! When Margot enters Chef Slowick's quarters, she notices a newspaper clipping of him working in a restaurant called Tantalus. In Greek mythology, Tantalus invited the gods to dinner and served them a stew made of his very own son. His punishment from the gods was to be forever hungry, but anything he ate would turn to ashes in his mouth, and when thirsty, his drink would evaporate before it touched his lips. The symbolism of working at some place called Tantalus doesn't seem to be lost on the chef either, but he seems to have taken it on personally. He's sacrificed his metaphorical son, or his dream of cooking, to serve the elite, who in this case represent the gods because we as a society tend to worship money and status, and now food has lost its appeal to him. Given the story of Tantalus and Chef's own take on the fable, eating here is still probably safer than eating at a Waffle House. When we first meet Tyler and Margot, she's wearing gold safety pin earrings. This is a metaphor that she's both out of place and safe from the judgment day that awaits the other diners. The earrings could also represent her place as neither a giver or a taker, as Chef labels the patrons and the staff. Wearing safety pins could also be a symbol for being resourceful, as safety pins are often seen as being very handy for survival. Just ask MacGyver. And the fact that they're golden could represent how far her resourcefulness has gone gotten her into a level above her class, so to speak. In the movie, John Leguizamo plays a washed up movie star named George Diaz. He is a self-absorbed, self-important narcissist who lies about knowing the chef in order to impress his actress girlfriend. Johnny Legs here based this role off of an encounter he had with actor Steven Seagal on the set of Executive Decision, in which Seagal slammed him against a wall hard for laughing at him. Leguizamo describes Seagal as a horrible human, which let's face it, there are probably very few people in Hollywood who would disagree with that statement. And at one point, George Diaz references a time where he played a cook in a movie. This is a nod to Seagal playing a cook in the movie Under Siege. Mr. Leguizamo, I just gotta say, your pettiness is just chef's kiss. So good. 
Anyone who's ever had to wait tables at a fancy restaurant or really work any service job probably watches this movie and gets a overwhelming sense of catharsis from watching all these fancy pants people get their comeuppance.